Hey y'all, I've been thinking about structs and memory recently and things that are copied versus things that are memory managed. And so I put together a little example here because I was thinking about a certain thing where tracing style garbage collection is going to be more efficient and easier to think about than reference counting. Here in C Sharp, I've got a struct, which are value types. Whenever you assign one, you get a copy of it and it has a value inside of it and also a garbage collected object, which lists are gonna likely to be, being as how they're variable sized. So the struct has a fixed size in the terms of this list will either be a pointer or maybe in some languages, maybe a size and a pointer. So the struct is a fixed size, but it contains references to non-fixed size things. And this is a placeholder for other kinds of uh, values you might have out there in the world. In the context of this program, mostly maybe you might want to go around and manage your metadata differently or other related things, but you might want to keep one cached reference counted or garbage collected list that goes around for convenience, but you don't want to make a bunch of copies of it. This might be strings instead, for example. And so the program down here, it just creates a new one of these things with arbitrary IDs and values stored inside of it. And then report changes here is making a copy with some changed metadata, in this case, the ID changes. I modify the contents of the list just so we can keep track that it's the same thing. However, if this was immutable data that had been built up during program execution, you might still wanna have a single copy of it being referenced from a variety of locations, just for efficiency purposes, rather than copying the entire list every time you wanna use it. And then I report the original thing, just some information about it, and then the copied one that has changed metadata. And really this change metadata is, I just change the ID and return the copy. These are structs, or in other words, value types. In other words, this is going to be a copy semantically. So let's run it. And we have our two copies with the incremented ID and the same contents in each. Again, because I've added just to A's vowels, and yet the number of things in B's vowels has changed as well from two to three. We know they're referencing the same internal list. And I have all this anti-inlining, so when I go to Godbolt, I can actually see the function calls. So let's compare this to C++. In C++, we have a struct. We have a shared pointer for reference counting, a vector event. Here's our upt ID, here's our report, Here's our report changes, and here's our main. Now, constructing the data is more awkward in C++, but that's the main difference between the two. If we look at report changes here between C++ and C Sharp, we get a new copy with the upt ID, we add a new value on, we report both. We get a new copy with the upt ID, we add a value on, we report both. Same number of lines, very similar feel to what I'm trying to claim is happening here. And again, it's a pass by copy, but something very different is happening in C++. So we'll look at the assembly code in Godbolt in a second. Let's run it first though. You see the same output as before, because to some extent, the same semantic things are happening here. But if we look at generated assembly, here's the C sharp, where to simplify what we're looking at on the right hand side in the assembly code, I've commented out the additional thing being put onto the list of values. Again, that's not the key point here. So anyway, here's our call to upt ID, and here's our call to report. Now, to be clear, I don't feel very expert in x64 assembly. I've been able to figure out a few things though. Here we're just backing up the contents of registers and then restoring them below. So very little is happening here in between. This is all of the real code that's being generated. And note, for example, we're putting things into this ESI register before calling any of these functions. But overall, we see very little actually happening here in this code. If we go look at upt ID, past all this printing out of stuff, we do see an increment happening here. I presume this is the increment of the ID itself. But again, key point being here that there's not a lot of weird things going on for these two copies of the struct. However, if we go to C++, where again, I've commented out the pushing on the back of the new value, we see here in report changes, we see not just this call to upt ID, but other things about counted base, shared count, and this is with some optimization on, by the way. If you optimize enough, you can make some of these things disappear just because compilers are clever. But I'm trying to get some feel of the semantics of what things mean behind the scenes here and not just see how well it can be optimized in my particular circumstance. 
The point being that there's extra metadata management happening behind the scenes in C++ versus what has to happen in C Sharp. You can really just do a straight copy of the bits of the struct in C Sharp and let the tracing garbage collection worry about later where the references are at. I'm not saying one or the other is better, just that they have different trade-offs. And some things are easier and faster because of the garbage collection. Or in other words, looking again here at the C++, there's secret constructors happening here. Is that whenever you copy a sequence, you've got to insert code that maintains the count going up and down for things that are constructed and destructed. And that was happening inside the code generated for report changes under the compiler configuration I just had. Or in other words, effectively, it's the people who are calling updid that are keeping track of those extra copies and the reference counting. And if you had another way of looking at this, let's go to Rust, where again, we have our sequence type, which some kind of ID slash metadata. Then we have reference counted, let it be mutable, vector of integers, our up to ID looks like in the other languages, our printing looks like in the other languages, our report changes looks like in the others. And this is busier than in C sharp, maybe less busy than in C++ for making our list. And let's prove that it actually works here. And we get the same result as before because the same list is being referenced by both of these sequence structs. But one thing we see differently between the Rust and the C++ is I have to say a.clone here, whereas in C++ I just said a. Because you have implicit behind the scenes copy constructors being called in C++. But there's no such thing in Rust. If I take out this a.clone and try running it, what we've actually done is done a move of that sequence over to the updid call. And in fact, the move happens either way, but in this case, I'm moving a clone. And the clone in Rust is sort of like the copy constructor in C++. In other words, work gets done when you say clone in Rust. And just like in C++, I magically had a copy constructor I never wrote. In Rust, I can derive clone without writing that code. But I have to say that I want it and have to say when I'm using it. Although the cleanup happens when things go out of scope automatically in both cases. I guess that means hopefully when you drop things slash destruct them, you're not doing anything expensive because that's not explicit. And by the way, there's another thing you can derive in Rust, which is called copy. And this means you believe it's safe to do just simple bitwise copies of things. In that case, it's fast and moves are effectively bit copies instead. However, if I try to claim this sequence struct is trivially copyable, like what I could obviously easily do in C sharp, the Rust compiler is going to complain at me. It says, you can't copy this. And the reason is because this thing here is not trivially copyable because in the case of it being reference counted, you have to manage the reference count. Or if I just had a plain vector, you can't trivially copy that vector either because it's going to be arbitrary length. Again, the struct here is a fixed size, but it's managing data that's not fixed and somewhere else and needs work done whenever you want to make a copy of it. If I get rid of the values, and all uses of them. Now I can copy it, although sort of more of a boring program. But while this thing was here that needed managed, I can't do trivial copies of it in Rust. And actually, let's look at one more thing here about contagion. Let's undo all these things we just did. Go back to what we had before. Make sure it works. Okay, cool. Now let's try making a struct containing this struct. more seek seek maybe I should just call that thing for the abstractness of this purpose okay probably still works although it says it's not being used and let's pretend we can make this one copyable again no good because this one isn't copyable so once you get outside of trivially copyable land it's contagious to anything else that wants to use that thing no matter how deep you go so again, the clone in Rust does extra work, and because I'm reference counting memory, I have extra work to do. C++ makes it entirely implicit, and C Sharp makes all that go away because it can do trivial copies because of the garbage collection mechanism. So that's all I had to talk about today. Hope it was fun. Helps me to think about memory management and what goes on behind the scenes. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.